fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfasts every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Smoky Hill was a well-built, happy-go-lucky, wandering cowpoke, a native of the Smoky Mountains from which he had derived his nickname. One warm day, Smoky slouched in the saddle as his wiry bronc razorback loped along the trail toward the town of Mayville near the Brazos River. Um, yeah. Suddenly, yeah. Smoky stood in the stirrups and, fanning the bronc's ears with his sombrero, gave out with his familiar yell. Yeah! Immediately, the bronc stopped short, stiffened its legs, and began bucking strenuously. <laughs> Doggone your hide, Razorback. You're the wildest bronc in all of Texas. Oh, oh, fella, that's enough. <laughs> now we both feel better, I reckon. Uh, come on, get along, Razorback. We'll soon be coming to town. Hey, well, I'll be a lop-eared hound dog. Look at the setup of that Indian that's coming on. Oh, it's got a ho, fella. Oh, yeah. ho, ho, Razorback. Howdy, Indian. I reckon that's what you all meant when you said that there, Tai. I'm <laughs> not right. Well, me here yell, see horse bucking hard, think maybe you need help. <laughs> well, now, Razorback and me didn't aim to startle you, none. We, we, we was just sort of letting off steam, wasn't we, Razorback, <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, well, me not know that. See, I... I'd admire to know your name, Indian. Seeing as how you all ride like you was saddle-born, same as me. Well, me named Tonto. And, and you can call me Smokey. Smokey Hill. The wandering cowpoke is what the last boss I had called me. You all know of a big spread near here where a doggone good cowpoke, uh, meaning me, <laughs> might get a job for a spell? <laughs> ah. Circle M spread plenty big. It right down trail short way. Circle M owned by a feller named Manton. Thanks a heap for telling me, Tano. I, I sure hope to meet up with you again sometime. Ah. Get along, Razorback. Judd Manton, a solidly built man with a shock of iron-gray hair, stood with his pretty daughter, Sally, leaning on the rail of a corral behind the ranch house. Practically all the ranch hands lined the rails of the corral, too, as they watched one of the cowboys being pitched and tossed by a bucking bronco inside the corral. Don't let him claw you, Kansas! Uh, 
Italians quiet and But at least Kansas stayed off. Ho, 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 raise a bat. Don't you think Kansas did all right then, Dan? You all mean that stiff sitting Bronco bust out yonder on the road? Stallion, ma'am, I... I say the credit goes to having a well seen saddle to hang on to. <laughs> it doggone if you didn't hit the nail right on the head, didn't you? Hey, where'd you come from? I- I'm looking for Mr. Manton, the owner of this here spread. My name is Smokey Hill. I'm Judd Manton. What do you want to see me about, Smokey? Well, sir, being a right good cow hand in need of a job, I thought maybe you could see I got way all the hands I need right now. Sorry. Well, now, that's just too bad, mister. I reckon we both lose out in that case. Huh? <laughs> well, I gotta admit you can blow your own horn, Smokey. Here comes Kansas. It's a good <laughs> thing he didn't hear your remark, Mr. Hill. Kansas would probably resent it. I always contend there's no use resenting the truth, ma'am. Well, Judd, how'd I do? Yeah, you did all right, Kansas, all right. <laughs> of course, this stranger here, he didn't give you due credit. Kansas... Meet Smokey Hill. Howdy. Glad to know you, sir. How come Judge says you didn't give me due credit? I don't say... Well, maybe Mr. Hill meant that he could ride the Black Stallion over there better than you did the Roan, Kansas. (laughs) That's a hot one. The Black Stallion's twice as wild as the Roan. Well, now, I... I don't say I could, and I don't say I could. (laughs) I tell you what, Smokey... Get on that black stallion and stay on, no matter how, and I'll consider giving you that job you asked for. I reckon that's a deal, Mr. Manton. Take him around to the corral gate, Kansas, and have the boys bring out that black stallion. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. Come on, cowboy. A short time later, Judd, Sally, Kansas, and the crowd watched as Smokey mounted the stallion, which stood in ominous quiet between the gripping hands of two of the men. Then the two cowhands leaped aside and the stallion went into action. <laughs> Jump in, Juniper. Look at that boy ride. He's waving his sombrero and acting like it's real fun. Oh, Kansas, can he ride? Yeah, maybe he's just lucky. Don't be a fool. Yippee! Ride him, Smokey! Ride him, boy! Smokey rode the raring bucking stallion as if he were in a rocking chair. Waving his hat and whooping now and then, he grinned at the crowd as the stallion gradually wore himself out and finally stood shivering but subdued. The crowd went wild, and Smokey walked back toward Judd and Sally amidst handshakes and backslapping. Let's go into the ranch house, son. You and me's got a lot to talk over right now. That evening, Tonto returned from a trip to town and pulled to a stop at the camp he and the Lone Ranger were sharing in the nearby hills. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. He's a fella. Hey, Kimosabe. Any news? Ah, Kimosabe. Yes? Me tell you about nice fella me see on trail today. Smoky Hill. Yes, I remember. What about him? Well, men from Circle M Ranch in town at Cafe. And them plenty excited. Them tell about Smokey riding wild stallion at ranch today. Them say Smokey plenty fine rider. But me not savvy why them so excited. <laughs> I can tell you, Tonto. The ranches of Mayville and the ranches of Red Rock, ten miles south of here, compete each year in a rodeo. The main competitors, though, are the Circle M spread and the Bar Y. Oh, Bar Y spread belong to a fellow named Cardale over near Red Rock. Oh, that's right. He's about 30 years old and considered a fine rider. His riding won the rodeo for the Bar Y last year. Ah, maybe Manton at Circle M figure on using Smokey in rodeo. Oh, I'm sure that's his intention, Tonto. I understand Cardale egged Manton into a $10,000 wager. A mighty foolish thing for Manton, since I happen to know he'd have to mortgage his ranch to pay off. Cardale has a cash in the bank. Oh, when them have radio, rodeo? Three days from now on Saturday. For Judd Manton's sake, I hope your new friend Smokey outrides Cardale to win. That night, Kansas, the foreman from the Circle M secretly met Clark Cardale in a room at the Mayville Hotel by previous arrangement. Hi, Kansas. Come on in. Well, how'd the practice riding go today? Like I said before, Clark, you haven't anything to fear from Tex. You made a poor showing. And, uh, well, you don't have to worry none about me. <laughs> I outrode you last year. I know I could this time. But I'm paying you to make a poor showing so there'll be no question about me winning again. Yeah, I know. But, uh, 
Well, Judd took on another hand today, Clark, and believe me, that cowpoke is a riding fool. He's slated to win hands down. By thunder, I stand to lose 10000 in cash to Manton if he gets a good rider in the rodeo. Yep. I hate to admit it, Clark, but with Smoky Hill riding for the Circle M, they've got the Bronc riding sewed up tight. Hmm. I won't do it all, Kansas. Not much you can do about it. Maybe there is. I don't savvy. How do you mean, Clark? I have an idea working, Kansas. An idea for a scheme that might work. With your help. Yeah? Just what is it you're thinking of? Maybe I'll win that bronc riding after all. Because if things work out right, when it's time for the rodeo... And I'm raised Smoky Hill will be in jail for murder. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Right, that's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take par Buston Sammy Sneed, born in old Virginia. Slammin' Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, North, East, West, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. Now, to continue. The following morning, Tonto brought startling news to the Lone Ranger as he hurriedly reined to a halt after a trip to town. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Kimasari, something happened. What's happened, Dotto? Smoky Hill in plenty trouble. Important jail for murder. Murder? Ah. Me hear about it at store. Just what did you hear? Well, them say Smoky find out last night another cowpoke, a fellow named Tex. Call him names. Say, Smokey, better keep out of way. Go on. Well, foreman at ranch tells Smokey, Tex spend night out on range watching cattle. Him talked Smokey into going out to see Rex. Uh, then what? When Smokey come back to bunkhouse, him say, him find Tex dead from bullet and back. And they blame Smokey for the killing? That's right. If Smokey did kill Tex, why would he go back to the bunkhouse to tell them he was dead? And that's what me wonder. Him have plenty chance to get away during night, seem like. Yeah, that's right. What does the sheriff think about it? Well, me hear foreman tell sheriff. Last word Smokey say when him leave to see Tex, that him make Tex change mind one way or other. Do you know where the killing took place, Toto? Ah. Tex killed at number one range camp. West Circle them spread. We'll go out there and look around. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, Father. <laughs> Later that morning, after making certain no one was around, the Lone Ranger and Toto stopped near the range camp where Tex had been killed. Oh, oh, easy, 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 easy. We looked for tracks behind the camp, Toto. With the campfire blazing, Tex would have made a good target for anyone with a rifle. Isn't that right. There are plenty of tracks there at camp where Sheriff and others come for body. Yes, I know. The Lone Ranger and Tonto walked slowly back from the side of the camp. On the range a short distance away, a large herd of cattle were grazing, and beyond the herd there was a sloping ridge. The masked man and the Indian had their backs turned, both to the cattle and to the ridge as they searched. Suddenly, over on the ridge, several shots rang out. Hello, the cattle. Those shots were intended to stampede them. They're headed this way. Silver and scout between us and her. Run toward the horses, Tonto, quickly. Ah. The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced against death as they headed back toward the horses. Their only chance. 
But at the same time, they were running toward the stampeding herd as it moved up on Silver and Scout. Without waiting to be called, the great horse Silver started at a gallop toward his master with Scout at his side. Just a short distance behind came the frenzied, bellowing herd. The Lone Ranger and Toto stopped running as the horses raced toward them. Master Silver! Master! As the racing horses came toward them, both the masked man and Indian were poised and ready. Knowing that a miss or a stumble meant death under the pounding hooves of the maddened cattle, the two men sprang for their saddles. Master Silver! With the leaders of the stampeding herd almost upon them, Silver and Scout made every effort to increase their speed. Meantime, the Lone Ranger saw that they were headed directly for a deep ravine. There was no time to turn aside. The herd was too close. Pointing ahead, he called to Toto. Hello, the ravine. Better jump it. That's our only chance. One, two, three. Up, Scout. Up, Silver. Up, up Scout. For a tenth second or two, they were in the air. Then... Oh, Silver. Hello, oh, hello. Easy, steady. Oh, Father. Oh, that was close. Fine going, Silver. Fine going. <laughs> Later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the place from which they figured the shots had been fired. After carefully studying the ground, the Lone Ranger suddenly reined to a halt. Oh, so Lone Scout, hold on. Sit it Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. All right, look there, Tonto. The hoof marks we're looking for. Ah. And here, one mark show where horse's shoe on right hind hoof broken, Kimasabi. We'll follow that trail, Tonto. All right, let's hurry. Steady now. Easy. Easy, Scout. Easy. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. The trail the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed led them directly to town. At the edge of town, the hoof marks turned off and went along behind the buildings. Then when the masked man and Tonto came up behind the hotel, they saw a bronc at the hitch rail and back. They pulled to a stop. Who's the gun? Horse, we follow. We got both of you covered. Reach. They don't move. The sheriff. Better do as he says, Toto. Uh-huh. I'm not an outlaw. Have your deputy take one of the bullets from my belt. Then look it over closely, Sheriff. I don't savvy, but go ahead, get me one of them, Ed. Sure. I got one. Here it is, Sheriff. Yeah. This is a silver bullet. And now I remember. Put up your gun. Ed? These here are friends of the law. I reckon it's all right if you say so, Sheriff. What brings you here, mister? Something wrong? Quickly, the Lone Ranger told all that had happened. The sheriff listened attentively. Then he looked over the bronc at the hitch rack. Yeah. Seems to me that's the bronc Kansas, the foreman at the Circle M ride. He's in the hotel, and he didn't want to be seen going there. That's why he came the back way, Sheriff. You got any suggestions? Well, the hotel isn't large, only four rooms on the ground floor. He'd have to go through the lobby to get to the upper floor. And since he came the back Uh way... That means he's in one of those four rooms on the lower floor, then. That's what I figure. Now, the room doors are flimsy. We're going to the back corridor quietly. Maybe he'll be talking to someone, and you and the deputy could recognize his voice. Sure, both of us know Kansas' voice, all right. Good, then let's go. Meantime, in Cardale's room, Kansas had told about seeing the two horsemen from a distance ride down toward the range camp. He told that he had ridden down behind the ridge to watch them, and that seeing them searching behind the camp, he had started the stampede. I lit out right after I saw the herd stampeding. You fool. I should have ridden over to make sure they were done for. When I'm lived to talk, folks might get to thinking the truth about Smokey being framed. Look here, Clark. Don't go calling me a fool when I was covering up for you. After all, you were the one who dragged Galt's text before I egged Smokey to go down there. All right, all right. Don't be so touchy. You better get back to the ranch before someone gets wise that you came here. All right. I'll get going right now. Get back in there, you. Oh, oh my mess, man. I'm... No, you don't. Oh, oh. Ah, cut him. Take them to the jail, Sheriff, where they belong, and let Smokey out. If he wins, Judd Matten can go to the jail and collect from Cardale. At least Smokey will be riding for the Circle M Saturday. Saturday afternoon, a large crowd gathered to watch the rodeo. On the fringe of the crowd, Toto and the Lone Ranger, who was disguised as a cowpoke for the occasion, stood watching each event with keen interest. Time after time, they heard a familiar yell. Ah, ah, ah. 
Yes, Smokey. Yes, he's a great rider. He's sure to win. And as the afternoon wore on, the Lone Ranger's words proved true. A great cheer went up from the crowd as Smokey was declared winner of Bronco Busting for the Circle M. As soon as possible, Judd Manton and Sally got Smokey through the crowd. Uh-huh. Smokey, you did us proud, mighty proud. Gosh, Mr. Manton, I, I was glad to be able to win for you. Well, for Sally. I didn't think I'd get to ride. I'm collecting the wager from Cardale, jail or no jail. And half of it's yours, Smokey. You might need it if you... If you decide to, well, uh, get married or something. Oh, well, well, now, that's a mighty fine idea. If Miss Sally thinks she can put up with me and raise a bat. Well, I, I reckon when I get to know you better, Smokey, well, your chances look mighty good. Well, uh, yeah! <laughs> yeah! It's too bad that Indian friend and the masked man who did so much for you couldn't see you win the bronc ride. How they did, sir. And that yell I just give out was to let him know how happy I'm feeling right this minute because of... Oh, but, Smokey, I didn't see him any place, and I was anxious to get a look at the masked man you talked so much about. Now look over there to the left on the crowd, Sally. See them hombres getting on the white horse and the paint oh, yonder? Oh, yes. I see the Indian getting on the paint, but the one getting on the white horse has his back to it. If he'd turn around so the mask would show, That's I could... them, Sally. And they're fixing to leave right now. The man on the white horse has his hands up to his face. Oh, look, now he turned around a minute and he's waving. Oh, oh, Smokey, he does have a mask on. I can see it now. Yeah, that's them all right, like I said. My good Indian friend, Tano, and, and the masked man who saved me from hanging. You see, Sally, he's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.